Hey people, this is Robert Porter. Welcome to the I Love San Bernardino Radio Show on station CNBC, KCA, 1050 AM, www.kcaa.radio.com. Part of the Danny Alcarez and Angel Baby Sunday Club. Every Sunday from 4 to 9 p.m. A place where we can all learn together. The call in line is 1 888 909 1050. City event to remember. The Road to Home Grand Opening Sale at Freeway Auto Center. Guest speaker, Second Ward Councilman Benito Barrio. On Saturday, July 11th at 11 a.m. at 333 South. Waterman Avenue on the corner of Waterman and Mill Street. Come on down, have a good time, and, and enjoy the, the, the free uh, informational booths and the people down there. I'll, I'll be on there hanging out. All right, on uh, our sponsor, of course, Green Shack Deli, established in 1978, voted best subs in the IE, 163 West Highland Avenue, San Bernardino, California, 94405. The phone number is 909-886-3812. Uh, give Manel a call over there and order in, and uh, you can actually eat in the back patio out there. Um, I love Green Jack. I would also like to ask everyone to look into re-electing Mike Gallo for the San Bernardino School Board. He's done a great job leading the way for our San Bernardino youth and has helped raise our graduation and, and our test scores locally. Please vote for Mike Gallo for San Bernardino City Unified School District. Now our call line again one more time is one eight eight nine zero nine ten fifty. And today our... Uh, Special guest is Abigail Medina from the San Bernardino Unified School District member and e- educational activist. How are we doing tonight? We're doing great. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm glad you're coming on, man. I, this is great. Uh, I love having school board members on because we get to learn about kids and education. Oh, we're going to definitely share a little bit what we're doing in the district. Okay, well, tell us a bit, a little bit about yourself and your family. I noticed your husband, uh, Jesus, is over there taking good pictures. Thanks, Sarah. This is a very good supporter. Well, I've, uh, we moved down here in 1997, and uh, me and my husband, once we came to, like, we actually live in the borderline of, of San Bernardino and Highland, and we've just loved the, we love the area, we love the neighborhood, and, and we haven't moved since, and, and since then we have uh, five children. All of them attended our pool. Why? Five? You have a school already. Yeah, I do. I, actually, I could build my own uh, baseball team if I wanted to. <laughs> but, and, and so right now, my two oldest is at Cal State San Bernardino. Uh, my daughter just, so my oldest is just still finishing her first year. She finished her first year, which is amazing to me. And uh, many of the opportunities that I wasn't able to have um, growing up in, in the public school system, I definitely am proud of her and my, uh, my son um, for pushing forward and setting the example of what our children here in the district are doing. They're doing great things, and they're accomplishing great things. Well, let me start out with congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thank I you. mean, five kids. Woo! I know, and then with uh, being able to afford all those schools, and, and so eventually all there are going to be four of them at the same time going to college, and uh, it's just trying to have you them. invested in good stocks over there, Jesus? <laughs> And trying to get these kids to make sure that they have um, good, good grade point averages to help with that piece as well. But like I said, our schools are really doing good. And then, of course, the partnerships that we have with um, Cal State San Bernardino, the Promise, which if, you're, if your students here in the district is uh, meeting the minimum requirements, and it doesn't have to be great, but just minimum requirements, um, there is a promise that they are eligible to attend um, Cal State San Bernardino here locally in the university. Which is like, I know it is. It, it brings better opportunities for our students. Well, yeah, I've been here. I mean, I, I've went through it schooling all through San Bernardino. And right. it's, it's actually been a great experience. It's been a great for me, so I'm not disappointed at all. Yes, and they actually have a new program there, which is the cybersecurity piece. And that's something that you can probably definitely try to bring back later on with um, someone in the in Cal State San Bernardino. And there's a big demand. I think that's one of the big pushes that we're doing in the district is uh, creating those pathways to careers that are actually in demand. We need to have fill those positions, and, and Cal State is definitely looking at um, you know providing those education well, for all those graduates yes. that you helped uh, raise their test score. Yes. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. So right now we have actually beat uh, the county uh, graduation uh, you know requirements, and so for uh, before since the 1970s we had not been able to surpass the county. Um, graduation piece, and, and we're very proud to announce that as of last year, we did pass. Um, yes, yes, we're doing great. We're doing great things, and we're um, graduating more students. I, I know in, in past years, 
uh, becoming school board member, one of the big pushes is to help our African American students and in, in actually designating um, the dedication. We gave ourselves permission to help our African American students who were um, not graduating on time. And what we did is we learned some great strategies on how we can help other students. And so when we helped them in the beginning, then we spread it to the Latino students and every other student to make sure that those that we see that are at risk or at potential of not graduating, we dedicated time and visiting them individually to, to promote um, a higher graduation in our district. And that's been very successful. We're going to continue that work. And all we can do now is learn from our mistakes and push forward and, and increase not only the graduation, but making sure that our kids are ready for college as well. So they're giving grants to the students and stuff like that? Not, not the grants. So what we are offering grants, but those are more for teachers. So, for instance, if a teacher at a school site has a great project, mm -hmm. um, if they have something with the arts and that they have, very, um, they have innovative ideas on how they can create that, uh, they apply to the district, and we um, offer grants for those opportunities. So we have um, we have offered uh, over a hundred thousand dollars in in separate grants, and I think it's actually more than that um, through different projects that the teachers have um, applied for. And they can they can pertain to the arts, it can pertain to the sciences, recycle. There's so many different things that the teachers are coming up with, and that uh, we're helping support in the district. What was uh, I seen something on uh, Facebook? I love San Bernardino about. Um, uh, a math book or a... So it's a Chromebook. Okay. What ha happened is that uh, I, I attended a conference, and I know some of the board members were also thinking of that. Um, there's a technology gap, and what that means is that there's many students in our district who cannot afford or have access to internet or computers. And so one of the ways is that we were looking at, and I know Danny Tillman is a big advocate for it, and one of our school board members, Danny Tillman, and getting a, a Chromebook for a low uh, for students to apply for or qualify for free and reduced lunch. And so any student who qualifies for that are eligible to receive a, a, a Chromebook. Now it's borrowed, but it's something that um, can definitely the students can access. And it comes with Wi-Fi. And that's even the best part. care of it, you don't have to pay the $200. Yes, yes. 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 Right, exactly. But the thing is that we offer our families now. And that's just not for the students. It could be for parents that they're trying to look for work and they want to access Wi-Fi as well. This is a great opportunity for the whole family in the house in accessing that because I've seen students well they'll do their homework literally mm -hmm. on their parents uh, phone oh, because of the wow. internet and, and I remember having a student come up to me and says you know what I did all my work on my phone can you imagine having to type all those information on your phone okay. <laughs> I know because they don't have access to the, uh, to the computers now they can go to public schools but unfortunately not all our public schools because the city how we're, we're struggling we have to provide more of the public schools in the district mm -hmm. in, the, in the surrounding city but how many total are there? Do you know? Do you know? Or? No, the, the, the public schools, I mean, the, the libraries, I'm not sure, but I know that um, within our schools, mm -hmm. that could be something that we can look into is opening the school sites during the after hours so they can have access to the to the libraries there as well, which they have computers. Because you can't do any report without you know, no. a laptop. Or yeah, and the, and the Internet, you're doing all your research. Everything now has to do with technology. And that's going to help alleviate at least that technology gap, as we mentioned earlier. I, I saw some complaints, but I, 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 I'm not complaining. Wait, you know what? But we got the, um, the more inexpensive because for us, we look at the cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, if it was an Apple, it would have been more expensive. So we look at a, a, a more affordable alternative mm -hmm. that's going to help with the families. And, and it's not for all students, um, but we are making sure that those who are, are the most needed and don't have access at home, we make sure that they are also. Is, is it possible to work towards that goal? To where we, all we students can, would receive like a book? Uh, yeah, we can definitely look into that, but that's right now we're starting the phases. This is our first phase. Cool, that's a great start. I know it is, it is, and it's going to help out with students. Like I mentioned before, they don't have to do, do it only on their phone, they can access it on a laptop. Ms. Alcaraz? I was kind of curious, what kind of jobs are we, are we creating for this generation? So right now in our district, we have different pathways. And, and just looking at San Gregorio alone, they have the, they're using their software or the, the software design or the computer systems. Mm -hmm. That's one career pathway. There's another one where it has to pertain to a services, and that could be through hotel and other types of services that they can do. There's another one that they have that has to do with, uh, I'm trying to see what the other one is. Um, really quickly. It's not those three, but I know that Indian Springs has a nursing, they have the 3D printing, they have the manufacturing piece, 
Um, they also have um, at San Bernardino High School, they have the florist, they have um, the, the police piece as well, the public safety. At, uh, and, and at Arroyo Valley High School, they have a construction field, which is great. Um, I just spoke with someone from the labor union, and they were very excited that well, we were kind of providing curious, it. I'm kind of curious about the manufacturing yes. what, what, what is that about? So what they're doing is the 3D. So these are actually high tech. Mm -hmm. They build with um, the the metal pieces of what airplanes or other big mm -hmm. businesses need and so what you're this is not um, this is actually a high paying job so if you graduate with a certification so we're looking at good paying jobs alternatives and so and the ones that are in high demand and I know we know that this is one area that's definitely so, in high demand. So that's kinda of like back in the day like in the fifties and sixties where we had the manufacturing jobs or mm -hmm. is that what it was kinda of like? Well I think it's more high they use computer systems with this one. So I, I think with with this piece is that that's why um, they were looking at uh, providing those educational opportunities early on because it is difficult. It is uh, more mm -hmm. difficult. So when you go out and you go into the higher fields of training, at least you'll be more experienced and won't have to, um, because it's really high tech. It really is high tech because I've seen the kids work on it. They use the computer systems. They're doing everything on the computer, the design, and then they're making sure it's not like how it was because I've seen when I went, went to visit Mike Gallows, um, the board member Mike Gallows, mm -hmm. um, the, their, techni their technical um, employment institute for the, for the training piece. And uh, you could see how it was in the old, I mean, the older, maybe, you know, 20, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. But now they have it more on the computer systems. Mm -hmm. Now this is all over at North. I'm, I'm going to go yes, actually yes, take a tour next Wednesday. Oh, you're going to love it. Out. You're going to like it. I'd like you to come to me. It's, 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 it's beautiful over there. Yeah, it should, should be a good, yeah, a good interesting your, tour. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. And I think what, what he offers in our district is that science technology, as we call them, STEM. Mm -hmm. We want to add the A for the arts, but definitely the STEM part is, is incorporated within the district. Very important. And also I wanted to mention at Royal Valley High School, they also have the educator piece. I know that um, uh, many of our teachers, you know, we want to increase the diversity in order to do that. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure we have a track. And so in our Valley High School, they actually have a track for students who want to become teachers. Okay. Uh, what about, like, the old schools, like auto shop and woodworking? Yeah, the woodworking. Yeah, the woodworking. I'm not too familiar. But I know there's. I know we do have several of those, especially the, the, the auto shop at... Mm -hmm. I believe it's at the time of Borneo, but I'm not sure exactly. We had a huge one at on Pacific, and with all the new equipment, and I learned so much, and I know that people graduated from that and went on to do good things automotively. Right. That makes good money. Well, you know, when I was in high school, um, it wasn't intentional. It was basically one of the leftover classes. I took auto shop. Oh, right. Okay. A, little rock, a little rock high school, so I was able to learn how to change uh, change stocks. At, uh, with our meeting you hear that? Band. <laughs> now, do I remember all of the stuff I learned back in high school? Not necessarily, but I need new socks. He's out there in the party. I know. I know. I could change it. I could change it. But that's something that you know, I learned how to do. Well, uh, the reason I mention that is because I, I'm starting to come to the point where I don't know if college is the, the best route for right. every single student. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to move towards on entrepreneurship. Manufacturing uh, the job. Yeah. And, uh, yes. make them, have them make their own business mm -hmm. or uh, you'll be an apprentice. Right, right. So, like, so even back in, you know, you know, dark ages, they had apprentices, and they learned their way, and then they, they built up, and they didn't go to college. Right. Um, I personally tell every kid to go to college, yeah. but maybe they don't want to. Maybe they want to try another way. And I agree with what you're saying, because for me, it's always been, you want to create the opportunities for the students, and that's for what we changed it to the district is college and career ready, right. meaning that so we want to make sure that the kids, when, when the students come graduate high school, they have all the needs that every employer is um, wanting, but at the same time, they have a career pathway that's intended to them. So we don't want to choose for them. We want them to choose, but at the end, we want them to be prepared. If they want to go to college, they'll be prepared. If they want to go to the nursing, if they want to go to auto mechanics, if they want to go into construction, they have that choice, but we provided those opportunities for them. Can we make them do them all? Them all. I know we can be. And then also with the entrepreneurship, that's definitely something that we need to provide, especially here in San Bernardino. You know, we like like uh, join forces with Gigi Hanna over there at the city clerk and then have a 
civic class or making businesses. That, that, can, be, that would be great. Making businesses before they get out of uh, high school. That would be great. That would be great. I know that's something that we are definitely looking at, the entrepreneurship. Yes, they, I was never approached as a student to start my own business, and I really believe that I should have been. Right, right. And if, if we think that way, then maybe in 50 years we'll have 50 huge businesses in San Bernardino you know, that will pay for everything. And you know what? I was speaking to several students, actually, it was a few days ago, and they were telling me, Abigail, you know what? We want the generation that they, you know, because we call them the men or, mil- millennials, millennials, and yeah. they don't like it, okay? But the thing is that he said, you know what we want is that we actually want to be our own business person. Mm-hmm. We want to be the we want to be the boss, and we want to do our own businesses, and that's something that they have their craving. They want to do. Um, they don't want no longer want to work in. Uh, cause they see one of them mentioned that they seen their parents struggle. Mm-hmm. And so they want to uh, they want to create their own business. They want to create their own ideas and so forth. And that's something we have to provide them. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm ready. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. I, heard, uh, I was talking to uh, to the uh, I call them kids, but in college days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To me, the kids. But yeah. Anyway, so they go and get their degrees, education, a bachelor's right. degree, and, and then for daddy, we wind up working at McDonald's because there's no jobs. Right. And they tell me that, and a lot of them tell me that. So, what can we do about that? Well, first of all, we need to see where the where there's the jobs, and then once the jobs, that's what I'm saying. Like for instance, cybersecurity, there's such a high demand for people, for students to study it that they're willing to pay you to go. Mm-hmm. And um, so, the, you have to look at where the high demands are and create those opportunities. I think that's what we're doing with the district. We're seeing that companies are saying we need these people, we need these students, and uh, we don't, we're not getting them, and so. We need to make sure that we provide a pathway to those when they graduate college that they have those jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and actually, those students that are graduating, for instance, the, the, the cybersecurity or the software piece, mm-hmm. they're getting jobs even before they graduate. And so, you want to look at what jobs are out there that are high demand and then try to um, guide some students if they're interested or test it out to try to see in high school if that's something that they're interested If it's not, then we can switch them out to a different program. And then um, you know, carry that pathway to um, to employment afterwards. So basically, we're creating sit down jobs, basically, with the community. Well, well, not just that. There's different others. There's nursing that's also in high demand. So there's mm-hmm. looking. There's looking at every. It's not just the computer system. There's many other looking at different jobs. Mm-hmm. And so there's, uh, like I mentioned, there's nursing that's definitely high demand. The medical field. Um, it, right now, it has to do with the STEM. There's science, me- um, technology, mathematics. And engineering piece, but there's other fields that definitely we can tap into. What I think is uh, all the corporations and all the they went to other countries and mm-hmm. took their corporations over there. I think that's what hurt us. Right? No, no, definitely. We mm-hmm. have to create our own yeah. locally manufacturing jobs, some kind of manufacturing right. jobs and somehow. Well, we look at we have to look at all the opportunities that mm-hmm. we can provide here locally. And for our residents as well, we have, we have to be careful with manufacturing. Again, the over there in China, right this second, they're actually skipping the employing of people. They're going straight to robots. Mm-hmm. Really? So yes, we have to the fully automated systems where they go 24 hours a day, and they don't need workers except to re, you know boot the robots when they mess up. Right. Yeah, we have to be careful. There's right now people. Are, you know, China is one of the most populous countries in the world. And they're not going to have any work. And that's why when you look at jobs, you look at not just now, you have to look at what's going to be available 20 years from now. Don't do a job a robot can do. I tell everybody (laughs) that. (laughs) Don't do a robot job. Yeah. Now that's McDonald's. And that's the big robot job. And that's creative thinking. You have to teach this. We have to teach our kids how to think out of the box, how to be creative, how to, in difficult um, situations, how to be able to create these future jobs that we don't see. And I spoke with. um, Wilmer, uh, former Assemblywoman Wilmer Amina Carter, she says that whenever um, you you create things, you always want to create things that are, are going to be uh, useful in the future, 20, 30, 50 years from now, that's going to be something that we want to leave, mm-hmm. because what may have worked 10 years ago might not work now, and might not work 10 years from now, so we want to make sure that we look into the future. Absolutely. America's going to keep building things. Yes, we building do. Building engines, building 
car parts, the everything we possibly can. You never know. Maybe we might have the something that we don't even think of right now, and we have to build those stuff. Yeah, so it's like the iPhone. Like yeah, a few years ago. It, yeah, it, I never had a um, a device like that. Oh, no, I had my pager when I was seventeen or eighteen. Or pager. Yeah, yeah, pager. yeah, yeah. And then actually, those people that had like two pagers in case. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember those big giant phones when they first came out? They were real heavy. They were stylish. They were stylish then. Yeah. Or the car phones. It was the car yeah. phones. Where yeah. the, in the beginning, it was the car phones. Yeah. You have the phone in the car. Well, we're, getting, we're getting close on time. I want to ask you about your, your own cause. Anything you specifically you want to mention? Because you're involved in so many things. Right. Well, one of the things that I also am very passionate about is looking at um, students who are um, fall between the both spectrums. So if you look at a bell curve, you have special ed and you have gifted students. And one of the things that I got involved with and I'm part of is the California Association for the Gifted. I'm one of the board members there. And we're looking at, especially myself, looking at the underachievement. Many of our, our most brightest or potential um, creative students are actually dropping out of high school. And so it's because of lack of challenge, um, lack of motivation, things come easier to them. And it's not just to put fault, well, you know, they're smarter kids. And not necessarily in that way, it's just that they have a different way of thinking. And so uh, a lot of our, even our minority students who have these capabilities, and um, in our district, we're very, uh, we're very blessed in the sense that we, bl- we test all students. We do blanket testing, but in other districts, they don't do that. So that's one thing that I've been pushing for is making sure that in our district, will uh, so that way we don't miss any of the students is we blanket all test students and some parents will be surprised even teachers say we well, can't believe the student is gifted or can get identified but we also have to look at the other spectrum which is special ed and there's some kids that need we need to make sure that we're providing the services um, to meet their needs as well and then there's kids who are twice exceptional kids who fall into both spectrums um, of special ed and gifted and they're the ones that are actually the most um, left out within um, the educational system. But there's That's a good breakdown. It is, it is. And, and we have to make sure, they're the often forget, there's actually articles about um, the, the kids who are not, um, you know, they're, they're the silence kids because there's no one really paying attention to them because they think, well, they're smart kids, they'll do fine on their own, they'll there's be 40 kids in class. No, yeah. and, that, no and, and actually it's just when they tune out, that's because it's, they weren't really engaged in the process. And so one thing that I'm very proud of that we're doing in the district is they're providing our teachers, all of our teachers, whoever wants to take it, the gifted, um, it's a gay training. And this actually teaches even higher than Common Core, but what, what it does is that it teaches you to help um, teachers how to help their kids think outside the box, creative thinking. This it helps can be mandatory? It, no, no. Well, I know the state. I know the state is what looks at it being mandatory. Unfortunately, it's not. But with our district, that's something that we're doing compared to any other districts. It's something new is testing all our, um, providing that training for all of our teachers. Whoever, it, the, that's how busy it is that the teachers are signing up. And um, if it's opened up at midnight, by a couple of minutes, it's already full. That's how really? much it's in demand. And this is for special ed teachers. This is for all teachers, not just mm-hmm. teachers who teach the gate. And it helps them um, with all students reach their full potential. And that's what we want to do. We have to help the, not just the students. We have to help the teachers. Too. Yes. My no, mom would, would go broke buying all that stuff no, for the kids. right. And we have to make sure. Because who at the end is there for the kids most of the day? That's the teachers. They're the teachers. We have to find ways to help support them. Okay. And it's also engaging the parents, though, because a lot of our parents in San Bernardino, we have to find ways to bring them into the schools and be um, help them be the partners for our educators and for the students. I got a question. What, yes. ca- what kind of uh, percentage rate are the kids not making it to high school? Does anybody know? They're really? The make well, it's around the twenties, but I have to get that information. From mm-hmm. but, Just curious. But the dropout rate, you mean? Yeah, yeah the dropout rate, mm-hmm. right? We can, we can. We, we're we're so, it's, so it's eighty percent. It's close to eighty percent for the graduation rate. So we have, like I mentioned, we surpass the county wide. So we need to get it to a hundred percent. No, we're and we're pushing because before we were in the in the lower seventies. Wow. So we're pushing it up, and we're going to definitely make it because every year we're changing. We have great board members, like I mentioned earlier, great superintendent Dr. Mm-hmm. Mars. And, and we're doing great things. Now, it, it, is the system perfect? Not yet, but we're definitely learning through the process and we're, we're improving constantly. 
Well, Abigail, thank you so much. I want to thank you for thank coming you for on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. You have a big, big lineup today, Danny. I'm sorry. I can see you have about 50 more questions over there. Thank you so I much do. for having me. <laughs> I do. But, hey, uh, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely like to have you on again, Abigail. I would love to come back. Hey, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you.